All right, welcome to another episode of KB Talks Podcast. I have my next guest, Mr. Howard Gentry. Before we get to our topic today, we're just going to get a little bit of background of yourself so if you can tell the people where you're from and what you currently do right now. All right, uh, my name's Howard Gentry. I'm currently the criminal court clerk uh, here in Nashville, Davidson County. I'm from Nashville, Tennessee. Been here all my life. Used to go to a hamburger joint right across the street. And uh, when I was coming up, Probably the only hamburger joint I could go to, but uh, uh, yeah, been here all my life, and and that's a long life. I'll be in, uh, February fourth will be my birthday. I'll be seventy years old next week. Yeah, that's good. Seventy years old. So, yeah. So how was it growing up back in your time while you were here? Man, it was great. Great, it was great. I mean, you know, uh, we had our issues with segregation and what have you. So. Uh, all segregation did was helped us to make our communities better. Right. And uh, so um, uh, Buchanan, Buchanan, is according to what, what part of town you're from, right. uh, none of them are wrong. Right. Uh, Jefferson Street, 12th Avenue South, you know, there were just certain streets that are certain areas of town that just provided you everything you needed, yeah. everything you needed. And so from a kid, uh, to be able to come on Buchanan Street, uh, all kind of stores and, like I said, the uh, hamburger, joint. hamburger joint. I called it a joint, but it was like a drive-in. <laughs> right. And uh, Jefferson Street gave you everything you wanted. Anyway, really from Buchanan to Jefferson, uh, that that um, that area, area, that neighborhood just pretty much, pretty much provides you everything. Gotcha. And friends, too. Right. Uh, we, we all lived here. So speaking on that, would you call Jefferson Street back in its heyday the Black Wall Street of Nashville? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. So biz yeah. businesses were booming up and down Jefferson Street. There everything. was our day of shopping on like on a Saturday. Mm -hmm. We go and park our car in the middle, maybe uh, there wasn't the interstate then, so where the overpass right. is, or park there. Sometimes we park uh, at up at 18th, which is DB Todd now, mm -hmm. and just start walking. And as we walked, um, we would, you, you could get, do anything, a shoe repair shop, doctor, pharmacy, barbershops galore, dentist, five and 10 stores, that we call them five and dimes, where you can walk in and get a little bit of everything. It's like a Dollar General, but okay. better, um, because you got a lot of kids stuff there. Um, uh, if you wanted to get school supplies, things like that, um, movie theater, the Ritz, the Ritz. Okay. Uh, bakery, clothing, I anything, oh, and this on. is this is kid stuff. Now, as I got older, they were there too. The clubs, right. the bars, the music venues, uh, just there was nothing that you could need. Uh, you could even get born. Go to Meharry, get born, and then just walk out on Jefferson Street, and you right. can just grow up right. the rest of your life. At, at the bookends, you have universities. You have uh, 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 Hadley Park. You had uh, one of the biggest swimming pools in Nashville, Tennessee, the Hadley Park swimming pools, outdoors, and baseball diamonds, tennis courts. And, and then you had the universities. And I keep saying that because the universities were not closed to us as kids, and, and so it was part of the community. Fist, TSU, Mary, you know, it was just, um, you, didn't, you didn't feel like we were cramped in or, or, or pushed out uh, because it we had everything we needed. We had much. it. I got you. Did, you, did frequent uh, famous entertainers uh, come, come to this area, perform at clubs? Like, what some of the experiences you had on Jefferson Street? Like, did you... I've heard oh. like Jimmy Hendrix just came down here perform. Well, when D Jimmy Hendrix came, he was a little older than me, but not mm -hmm. not really that much. You right. just knew he was here. Okay. Jimmy Hendrix was playing in clubs I couldn't go to when he was coming because okay. I was too young. Gotcha. But you knew he was here. And uh, but our star was Johnny Jones, mm -hmm. and Johnny Jones taught Jimmy Hendrix really how to play that guitar. And so I was able to listen to Johnny until he until he passed. Mm -hmm. And uh, he was amazing on the guitar. But yeah, the Manhattans, uh, the Impressions, um, Al Jarreau, um, 
multiple Man. people. I mean, right? Yeah. yeah. You can just right. go into the um, to the club, and, and if you turn down this street and go past um, the school, mm-hmm. is it Hull Jackson? Hull Jackson, yeah. Yeah. And once you go down that hole, there was um, a club back off in there with live entertainment, but you couldn't find it if you didn't know it was Where back was there. Was and we always joint. remembered it because you had to be careful what you wore because it had neon lights all through it. So if you wore something with a lot of lint, <laughs> man, you look you look like a sheep walking through there, you know, uh, because, but, uh, it, I mean, and I'm just naming some, but you had your local entertainment too. You had your Jimmy Churches and your Tyrone Smith and um, – um, uh, oh man! I, right now, it's just everywhere. Right, a few doors down was a jazz club, man, where you had local jazz artists that performed uh, all, almost every night. So it was it was, just, it was a unique place to have all that in one community. Oh so yeah, you had your adult entertainment, yeah, speakeasy bars, yeah, you had stuff for kids, yeah, you had the university, so you had the college crowd that would come. So I mean, to see all that, and you know, once we. Once of age, once I got here, you know, people my age group, we only saw what half of what Jefferson Street had to offer. And it's kind of weird because when people say the interstate messed it up, all we know is the interstate. Yeah. And, all we, and it still looks like a regular Jefferson Street because we not, we're not seeing no, it's not a regular all Jefferson the property Street. that right. the interstate took up once it was established and built. So that's why I'm trying to, you know, kind of get people to think about, like, to picture a community with everything included in it, what you said, like, you don't have to leave and it's all black home. Well, see, what the interstate did, it it, it gutted the the community. It, the it gutted it. the people mm-hmm. out of the community. It uh, it was a blatant uh, effort to bring transportation through Nashville without giving any regard to the black community. And as simple as that. And, and it almost killed us. It almost mm-hmm. destroyed us. And, uh, and 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 Nashville owes us. They they, they gotta they we can be we can be put back together. Right. Uh, I mean, I see what's happening now, but a lot of what's happening now is because we have young people like you all that care, and so you're coming back to the community. But there, there was no real effort to bring you back. You came back because you love it, you know, right. and and uh, uh, but. You know, you can't take away the the heart and soul of a community and, and, and just leave it alone when you see people struggling and fighting to try to bring it back or, or just to keep it alive. Right. And so uh, I just hope for the day when, uh, yeah, there, there are efforts that are taking place, but, but I want to see a plan. Right. I want to see a plan, and, and I have not seen it. You know. we'll touch more uh, about that later on. Quick question, though. During the Civil Rights Movement, what role did Jefferson Street play during the Civil Rights Movement when was going on in Nashville? Were you around that time? I was around. <laughs> yeah, I was around. Uh, okay, so just put some perspective on it. I was born in 1952. Okay. Civil Rights Movement started in the 60s. 60s. And, well, it really started before, but it really flared up and, and really became uh, full-blown and effective through the early 60s. Okay. So I was aware, and then I was a member of First Baptist Church, Capitol Hill, which was right. downtown, and it was kind of the hub of, of it. And then you had the universities that were involved, too, and my parents were at t- Tennessee State working. And so, uh, yes, I, w- I saw it all, and the black community became my cradle. It, it uh, That's where... Uh, during the civil rights movement, we were able to, we we were able to to really uh, be loved because during the civil rights movement, that's when you really saw hatred. Uh, you know, growing up, you knew about segregation, you knew where to go, not to go. Blah, blah, if you didn't blah. mess with anybody, yeah. didn't mess and with you. Yeah, but apart. but now all of a sudden the movement starts and up. and people start fighting back or mm-hmm. or you talk. I'm talking about the people who who Opposition. feared right. uh, the fact that, that uh, a black man could actually truly be free. And so the, the, the black community really became our safety, uh, our place of safety. It's our safe house. And uh, because that, it, it got ugly around here. And uh, so, uh, but 
we still didn't, it didn't hurt our economic uh, 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 ability. It, it did not hurt our economy, but what came right behind it and with it was the interstate. Right. And so where we're fighting just to be able to eat at the same restaurant or go to the same school, swim in the same swimming pool, go to the same doggone bathroom, they're cutting, they're, they're, they're gutting your community. Say, all right, you know, you can eat, but now you, now you don't have nowhere. Find you somewhere else to live. We got an interstate coming through. Yeah, Find true. you some customers, Odie's grocery store on the corner. Find you some customers because we got an interstate coming through and, and all the uh, wonderful places that, that serve the community. Well, they could have served the white community. The same way, we, we, we weren't over here in North Nashville uh, saying, white people, you can't, can't come, come in. in our community. Right. Uh, we would love it because spend money over here. But unfortunately, we couldn't go the other way. Gotcha. How, was, how important was it to have a black community like Jefferson Street back in the 50s and 60s where it was business was booming? Like you said, as a kid, whatever age you were, you could walk up and down and find what you need all all black owned, all in the same community. How how much of a, of a blessing looking back on it now? Oh man, how big was that? Yeah, you know there are people who never saw that. Well, you talk about yourself, right? Uh, that never really saw it in in a huge way when it was when it was the thing. Uh, you see black businesses now, and you say, "Oh, that's great, man. We got a black business here. We got a black business there," but. Man, to walk up down the street and, and your doctors, your lawyers, your teachers, everybody is out there doing it. Prospering. And like a lot of our school teachers, that's what they did. They had little businesses or even they worked in the businesses to supplement income. And so just to be able to do everything around people that you know, for generations of people to grow up, in the same community, be educated in the same community. See, I got my education just except for a year and a half when I left. From K through master's degree, I got my education in North Nashville. I went to Murphy School, I went to Head Elementary, I went to Washington Junior High where Pearl Cohn is now, I went to Head, I mean I went to uh, 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 Pearl High, which is now MLK, and then Tennessee State. I played uh, football for a year, almost two years at Florida a &M, <clears throat> but I got hurt, came back home, and where I belonged, and uh, got my education. But I, you didn't ask me this, but I'm gonna say it. That year, almost two years away, uh, helped me to appreciate Nashville more. When I was at Florida a &M, great school. They had dirt roads all around the campus, all through the campus in the 70s. They lived in a city that was probably as racist as Nashville, but it was very yes. small. Right. And so, you know, you could see it and feel it a whole lot more. And the campus was it, you know, because across the street was Florida State. Hey, yeah. And, and, but, it, it helped me to grow up because I got away and where Howard Gentry was the enemy because he was the athletics director at Tennessee State and Tennessee State, they, they hated Tennessee State, Florida. And them. So it gave me a chance to be on the other side for a little while and, and to grow up as a man. But when I did come back to Nashville, I was still 19. I was young, 20. still young. Yeah, when I came back, I could appreciate uh, Nashville more. Gotcha. Yeah. Was it known for business owners to take in um, kids in the community, you know, rather for hiring them for their first-time oh, yeah. jobs, helping them get through school? Man, man. And how was it with the community really taking care of each other from oh, kids yeah. on up? Everybody, I mean, everybody worked at, 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 um, at um, uh, Otis at some point in time growing up. Or you worked at Sweats or, or you, you worked at uh, the, the Five and Dime or uh, at Prices. Um, um, the college crib. College crib didn't look like college crib. You saw. Oh, okay. College crib was uh, a building on the corner, old house, <laughs> and uh, Mr. Price, uh, treacherous uh, 
uh, uh, granddad, or credit to all treacherous uh, dad, uh, Mr. Price uh, uh, would 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 iron on your, your stuff like your letters, your, your letters stuff, and and uh, you wait in line for it. And but everybody worked in the communities, at the restaurants, at the at the clubs, at the stores. You know, it, it was you didn't have to leave your neighborhood to to get a job. And and you could stay in your neighborhood and get your education. You could stay in your neighborhood once you got it all your education and and raise your kids. I mean, it because you had different uh, levels of income living in the same community. Mm -hmm. So you you didn't uh, you didn't have a bell mead. Your bell mead was right there in in, in midst of your community. So it was the epitome of a village taking it, a village to raise a child. It's it pretty was much what you had it in was, North Nashville. Yeah. Yeah, uh, my parents, the first house they built, they built on Geneva Circle, right on the hill behind TSU, above Preston Taylor. There were no houses up there. Mm -hmm. And my daddy told us, he had a family meeting. He said, we're not going to go to Bordeaux or, or in Channel Hills. We could, right. but we're, we're going to build Stay our house there. right in the, in the heart of the community so we can help the community to, to improve and grow. And uh, wow, it was a great experience. That's great. Are you familiar with the Capitol Hill redevelopment project uh, that happened in 1952? The the Capitol Hill. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think okay. When they moved out the uh, all this, the the uh, uh, slums from around the, the Capitol and. And yes. Okay. Uh -huh. Was that one of the first things where you kind of saw they were kind of here? Because I actually did some research. I didn't know that the city's original plan was to build the interstate tour over there by Vandy and Bell Mead area. Yeah. And then there was an uproar in that community. And the and city gave its own, gave itself a, another thing to like, hey, we're not going to do it over here. We're going to go towards Charlotte and North Nashville. Mm -hmm. And that's when I did the reason. I'm like, man, that's crazy. It was originally supposed to be in the Vandy area. Yeah. But then it's, it shifted over and, here. And then like it could have shifted. Uh, it could have stayed in the Charlotte area and not affected, affected as many homes, white or black, right. or businesses. But this was the easiest route. Mm. And, uh, and probably the more simple route for construction's sake, but the, 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 the most devastating route uh, for our community. Yeah, because I uh, looked up about the uh, steering committee, the I-40 steering committee. They had uh, Attorney Avon Williams a part of it and Mitchell, uh, guys that tried to fight back against the city's you know, plan to build the interstate, and it kind of went through Congress. Never really made it up to the court course, but obviously got pushed back for various reasons. So uh, what was going on? How old were you during that time? I know it, it was built in 1968, but I'm sure – Stuff had already started happening. Oh in yeah, the they early had to cut. The 60s. They had to cut the. Uh, they had to cut through the 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 the, the rock hey, and everything. Hey. Start way before then. Mm. All right, so let's put it like this: When I went to Pearl High School in 1967, okay, I could walk my girlfriend home across Jefferson Street. I'd come up DB Todd, which was 18, and walk her home. Before I graduated, I would have to, to go all the way down to uh, close Charlotte. to R&R &R Liquor Store and Mary's and come around Just get to, to the same spot. get to the same spot. So look how that affected people. What about the, the, the person that lived on Scoville Street near um, um, uh, the church uh, uh, on... Uh, that used to walk across the street to go to the grocery store. That's over with now. No, they got to drive or get a ride and go way down by TSU and come back to get to Otis. I mean, it just um, it, it just cut a hole in us. Yeah, and then they was talking about how the highway displaced 128 businesses was represented like over 80 percent of black ownership in the city. Alone. Yes, that's yes. a lot. Now they want to say the highway didn't do it. Uh, all 180, whatever. Right. But what happened was when you take the customers away. You can no longer walk to the store and walk back home. You can't walk, you can't get there. Drive. So it, it, it affected them and caused them to be able to close. So I still blame it on the highway. <laughs> <laughs> and 
and I blame it on the, the people that decided that yeah. it should go. And to some of their credit, some of them did apologize because they could have done it differently. Yeah, but I mean, it's, it's, it's kind of easy to apologize after everything has been done after the fact. Well, it's um, easy to apologize, but it's easier to never say, never anything. say anything. So, so you, you have to, you know, people have to, people have to grow uh, by, we, we grow by our mistakes. It's not, now this is not discounting what they did right. and saying, you know, it, it's more than a mistake. That was on purpose. But, you know, Sometimes people make decisions and they don't think about the effect of that decision because they're not affected. So they, they're just out of sight, out of mind. And, and, uh, but my biggest problem, excuse me, is that there was nothing done during the, the heat of it, the, the aftermath to start correcting it. Uh, now we're doing stuff, you know, they're talking about a the cap project. The cap project uh, and it's fine, but yeah, they gotta be careful with the cap project too to make sure that it's not benefiting others other than our community. Well, it can mess us you know, up again if yeah. it's done wrong. If yeah, done wrong right. or if, if, <laughs> if, you, if you gotta make uh, a quarter million dollars a year to be able to live in the cap, you know, helping. I mean, it's not gonna help. So. Uh, I will never discount any effort. It's just too bad that the effort is coming so late. All right, so speaking of the uh, uh, the interstate coming through the neighborhood, how, in your opinion, were people moved out? <laughs> well, I'm young. <laughs> I was young then, but, you know, I was vice mayor, right? Right. And so I know how it's done in, in other instances. So what I would imagine is it was, I know it was eminent domain. In other words, the government by law can actually take your property, pay you for it, mm -hmm. but of course they create the price and the value. You don't, it's not like you, you have can, no say so you in how put much it. You well, you might it. protest and, and, and try to get more, but it's not like you can put it on the market and, and they have to match your price or, or you don't get it. The council votes to, to, uh, on eminent domain. And so if your address comes up as a piece of property needed, the, the council gives the uh, government the right to, to offer you a price. And, and you have to go. So if you don't accept the price, you just get nothing at all. You get that. You still get it. Okay, they still give it to you. You still okay. get the money. Like you, you say, just, you protest all you, you want to. You, but you, you, you can't. We had a guy that owned a used car lot across from, um, uh, across from the farmers market one time, and and he didn't want to sell his property, and he he just sat on the property and and they had to move him, you know. But but they give you the money. But these people whose property was, because it's not like it's a resale. Right. Your house gets destroyed and, and they dig through it. And so these people, these 600 people or 700, however many, uh, they were given a check. And, and, get out and they had to go. Date. They had to go. Yeah. That's, I guess that's when everybody flocked to a place like Bordeaux. Bordeaux, um, Nonesville Road area, right. um, South Natch, if, anywhere they could go. I mean, and and it's just it's it's a it's a sad thing that occurs uh, in our country, and the problem is is that sometimes we don't think beyond the project. Where does that person go? How does that? I mean, they they I'm sure there was some futile effort to try to help them get to another location, but it was 600, 700 people. What are you going to do? All right, what are you going to do? And then you had communities during that time that still didn't want us in their neighborhood mm -hmm. and in their communities, so we had to. It's sad because, I mean, it seems like every, every major city in America has this story about a community yes. that was black-owned, black-ran, yes. and somehow, some way, 
even though it may still be there physically, it's yeah. not it's not there as it used to be. No. You know, it's it's every city has its own story about it. No. Nope. You know, so it had to be gone when it was time for the bulldozers to start running. Mm -hmm. And once that happened, that's it was what a wrap. happened. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, because when you when you look at what happened, you know, with it destroying six hundred and twenty black homes, twenty seven apartment houses, six black churches, that's a lot. That's a fuck community. That's that's <laughs> six. That's almost seven hundred homes, seven hundred families. Because then you think about generational wealth, property, all that gets flushed down the drain. It's like dropping a bomb. Yeah, basically in the community. Yeah, when you destroying that much property, fifty local streets. You saw the removal. devastation of the tornado. Yeah, worse than that. Worse than that. Worse removal than that. of fourteen hundred landowners. That's yeah. a lot, and that worse affects that. generations to come. Yeah. Um. So I know it's it's been a lot said as far as future plans for Jefferson Street. What do you what do you think as of right now as today? What do you think the future plan for Jefferson Street is? Is there a plan yet? But they say there is. I I don't throwing out ideas. Uh I don't uh I haven't seen just a, a true plan, mm -hmm. but what I have seen is people coming in and and improving the street. Okay. And the and the area. Uh it's just where I want to see the intentionality is to make sure that those people who already live there can will 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 be able to sustain them or they can stay. Stay, stay there. Pretty they much. can they stay. Let's to put using yeah. the the words that got all the, the letters <laughs> in it. If that they can stay there, right. and that they can work there, that they can can be able to live there in the state that they're in, whatever that is, financial, whatever, <clears throat> that, that they're able to stay. And, and you can legislate stuff like that. You can create opportunities uh, like that. I see um, developers coming in that don't look like the community. I don't have a huge problem with that as long as they're developing for the community. And 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 but I, I but a norm, your normal situation, your most trusting situation is when you when you create a, a opportunity for development in the community by the people community. who understand the community, and know the people community, have the best people's interests at heart, and who anyway. are vested you know in the community. Naturally, you're gonna have the best people's yes. interests at heart. Usually, when you, you yes. look like them, I mean, because. New developers could come in, they could be having the same mind state as people who build the highway. It's like, yeah. what can I get out of the situation now? I'm not thinking 10, 15, 50 years down the road. They're thinking about what, what can they sustain now. Or if they really believe in their heart that they're doing the community a favor, but they put apartment uh, development where they cost you $1,800 to $2,500 a month. Well, that's great for people that can pay eighteen, twenty-five hundred dollars a month. But unfortunately, uh, that's that's not a lot of people that look like the community and and come from the community. So, you know, uh, nothing against twenty-five hundred dollars a month <laughs> if you got eight hundred in there with it. Right. You know, if you got a mix, you know, it's or, so. or a thousand. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's a shame, man, because you know our generation. For sure, we, we weren't able to, to see that, um, how Jefferson Street was, how it benefited Fitz, Meharry, Tennessee State. We just heard stories on stories on stories. So you never just really grasp the idea. We just know Jefferson Street as it is now, which is yeah. okay. But, you know, when you – I've told these stories. You're trying to picture. It's hard to picture, you know, all this stuff going on at the same time in the same area. Um, so it's just a blessing to have somebody like you able to kind of express, you know, how it was and hopefully – our generation, generation could come, could kind of fight for that to somewhere. It'll never probably be the same. Well, but, it won't be. But, right, right. But, but kind but, of just make an yeah. attempt to restore some of it back to community. You know what a cab is, right? Mm -hmm. And I mean, y'all do Uber <laughs> and Lyft. Yeah. But we had three cab companies on Jefferson Street. Really? Kennedy, Lewis, and uh oh, they're going to get mad at me. They still around today? Harlem. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, and um, uh, also um, uh, had a bunch of funeral homes on Jefferson Street, a few. Yeah. And it just, man, we had everything. I mean, it's just, the, I mean, just the dream of, of going to medical school at Meharry and then 
getting your getting your diploma and walking around the corner and opening up your practice. Right. Or to be able to do intern or residence, not residence, but intern or, or start with somebody that already has a practice. You know, it's just yeah. and I just I'm thinking now, uh I took my piano lessons, uh music lessons, just everything. It was nothing that you could want that you couldn't do on Jefferson Street. Yeah. All right, we're going to hope for the best and hopefully some things happen in the future. I know, like, like you said, a lot of ideas are being thrown out there, but it's better to see a plan yeah. executed the right way uh, for hope in the future. So on that note, man, we're going to end this episode of KB Talks Podcast. Mr. Gentry, we appreciate you taking out your Thank time. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, we'll probably catch up with you some, some next time, man. Probably get you back on here. But we appreciate it, sir. Have a great one. Appreciate you. Thank you both. <laughs> All right. All right.